Welcome, everybody! That was my Chris Harris impression. Welcome to the 2019 Mansion League Rundown. Done electronically. I guess you could think of this as a special episode of 3 and Out. We're here to review the 2019 Mansion League draft as previously stated. Or did I state? I don't know. Short-term memory issues drives my wife up a wall, if you know what I'm talking about. And what do you want to go through as, you know, efficiently, as quickly as possible? Let's see. It's okay, it was just the ice machine. Who got value? And who got screwed? Uh, I'm going to try to move through this. Uh, I obviously enjoy writing the rundown, uh, but it takes up a lot of time. Time I don't have... Uh, time that I need to start packing for Italy. I've got probably 20 minutes until my wife gets home, so let's knock this thing out, shall we? Um, this episode, special episode of 3 and Out, is brought to you by the Whiff Zone. Still got that lawn chair? Time to get rid of it. Get your Whiff Zone today. And without further ado, let's jump right in. Uh, no surprises in the first round, right? Saquon Barkley, Alvin Kamara, Christian McCaffrey, uh, one, two, three. And the only comment I have there is I think Eric made the right choice in going with McCaffrey, uh, or excuse me, Kamara over McCaffrey, uh, as it's unlikely that Latavius Murray will equal the volume that Mark Ingram did. Um, also note that uh, Kamara was very efficient on the goal line last year. Um, Latavius is known for his goal line prowess, having scored six touchdowns in three straight seasons. Um, but I think Kamara should get his fair share. Um, and I like him, uh, actually more than Saquon because while Saquon was the consensus number one pick, you really got to wonder, Bob, especially with Mara, uh, addicted to Eli, unwilling to to turn the ball over to Danny Dimes, who's looked uh, looked pretty good this preseason. Uh, the reality is, without the field-stretching ability of uh, Odell Beckham Jr., you really got to wonder, can Saquon rip off uh, the runs that he had last year? He had 12 runs over 25 yards. That was five more uh, than that next best player, who I believe was... Uh, some very good running back. A lot of guys tied for 7-6. and six. So that uh, could easily regress uh, and is likely to regress. Uh, though the offensive line has gotten stronger this offseason, I will note that. Um, and obviously Saquon will be peppered with uh, short targets. But without those big runs, you have to wonder if there's some regression due there. Um, and if Saquon can keep up that insane ability he had last year, which was to deliver consistent double-digit points last year. Um, maybe this Giants offense is better, though. We'll see. But, um, you know, and I don't know that I would have had the balls to take Kamara over, over Barkley, but uh, I'd like to think so. Uh, I've taken up way too much time on the top three picks. That's two minutes already, so let's keep it moving. I took David Johnson at four, right? Uh, normally I go risky. Right, normally I'm a guy that um, you know shoots for the stars, uh, willing to risk it for the biscuit. But I think the reality is, right? The reality is. But I think the reality is is that Ezekiel Elliott is losing uh, leverage by the day. Dak needs more money. Amari Cooper, being the uh, premier wide receiver on that team, is going to command more money and be more of a priority for Gerald Jones. Uh, Jerry Jones might be flexing a little bit, but uh, Tony Pollard has played really well. And quite frankly, uh, there doesn't be, seem to be any updates, right? It's August, uh, what, 19th now? Um, you know, it's super quiet on the uh, uh, Zeke front. At this point, my gut says he's missing week one. I do not want to be the team that starts 0-3 because I'm waiting for Ezekiel Elliott to happen, right? We saw what happened with Bell. Not willing to risk it. So I go David Johnson. Should I have gone receiver there? We'll see, right? Cardinals preseason game, that was a bit of a disaster. That line is a mess. Um, and hopefully, you know, the reports uh, from Arizona's camp, uh, which is that they're not, uh, you know, showing their hand with this air raid office from Cliff Kingsbury is, is true. Um, but for me, 
right? Don't want to lose uh, the league with my first pick. I go David Johnson. Then. I don't think I have any issue with that. Which means Zeke goes at five. Um, and quite frankly, I think that's going to cost Cheddar some time, some serious time. Uh, not to men- We'll get to it later, but pff, Melvin Gordon, that doesn't look close either. Okay? So I decided to go with the powerhouse running back again. Might not be the best between the tackles this year, uh, but should be peppered with targets. That offense should move much quicker. Um, that defense has lost two premier quarterbacks. Robert Alford gone for the year with that torn ACL, and Patrick Peterson uh, nursing that uh, ped suspension for six games. This team will be playing from behind. And I know, right, it's that classic, oh, they're, they're bad, so they're going to be playing from behind and have to catch up. Yeah, they were bad last year, too. But you know what? They didn't have Kyle Murray last year. Okay? Well, let's just keep it at that. Uh, so I have no issue with my David Johnson pick there. Zeke goes five. Adams at six. Love that. Uh, and I like that over uh, DeAndre Hopkins as well. Um, though you like Hopkins a bit more now that Kiki Kuti, uh, or I like to call him Kiki Kuti, rather. I think it's a French name, but who knows. Uh, he's now nursing that ankle injury or leg injury of some sort. So, uh, you know, no tight end target yet. Um, Lamar Miller still there. Um, and I believe that defense is not as good this year. So, uh, should be some better game scripts for, uh, uh, these Texans to, uh, play from behind a little bit. I know we just talked about, we shouldn't be relying on that too much, but no issue with Adams over Hopkins there. I would have done the same thing. Connor at eight, very controversial, and I say that because a lot of people are on Jalen Samuels. A lot of people are on Jalen Samuels. Uh, Though I think you'll see from now this preseason, any Connor owner is going to feel a little bit better. Uh, He got a lot of work, um, uh, or excuse me, was he got exclusively first team snaps in that last preseason game. Uh, Jalen Samuels might not be as much of a thing as we thought he was when we were drafting, so no issue there. Uh, good luck to James Conner. Loved him last year, right? Saved my uh, season and Hank Fraley uh, when I drafted Bell, um, of course. Uh, Julio Jones, uh, like that at nine, like that over uh, Michael Thomas personally. 13 games in a dome this year for Julio Jones. Um, would be shocked uh, if he didn't surpass uh, 1,600 yards again. I mean, he's just automatic. And now uh, with with 13 dome games and and listen, we can skip ahead. That means I like Matt Ryan this year, right? Definitively a top five fantasy quarterback right now and would not be surprised if he beat Aaron Rodgers once again. Um, so we'll see. Michael Thomas goes at 10. Listen, guys, Nick Chubb, oh, my God. There was a moment, there was a moment, right, where I almost had some Chubb. You know what I'm saying? And uh, thought maybe this was a good time to take Chubb. Instead, uh, that offense, that line, I just, I mean, Nick Chubb might have 14 touchdowns on the ground this year, right? We know he's not going to get the passing work, but that's so fine. Uh, that That's okay. Um, but again, probably not uh, many players. Let me just, I'll take a step back this year. I, I Just to comment on my approach. Every single year, I go into each draft with about, I don't know, four to seven guys that I absolutely have to have. This year, very unique, uh, where I was really, I felt truly round-to-round agnostic. Sure, I have some targets and some sleepers and guys I like, but, um, you know, there was no Kareem Hunt for me this year, where, oh my God, I have to get him at second, or, or, or I just, I will do anything I can to do that, right? Maybe Chris Godwin a little bit, but I just knew he wasn't gonna get to me, and I was not gonna reach for him, right? So, odd year, uh, and a good year. I think most people's teams look good because I think the player pool this year is better than it's been in the last five years, meaning the the total amount of points that are, were up for grabs, it seems super high. It's just a lot of good skill players, and uh, it doesn't shock me now that the average, uh, that, that everyone's projections seem to be 120 to 125, uh, and not most teams being 112. I legitimately think that's because there are so many more skill players this year. And those middle rounds now, which were terrifying in the past few years, especially where you felt like you could lose your draft, this is where all the targets were and the value was. Um, so again, normally, I'm a little bit... How you doing? <laughs> 
but uh, you know, this year for sure, uh, in a in a better place where I felt like you know, listen, whoever's there, I'll take my stab. Let's get back to it, okay? Nick Chubb over Le'Veon Bell, no issue there. Le'Veon Bell's really tough nut for me to crack this year. A lot of people want him to be picked at five over David Johnson. Uh, Sam Tarnold looks unbelievable. Um, but you know what? For me, and I and now, right, I was in on the argument, oh, the Jets are not going to run as many plays. It's Adam Gase, yada, yada, uh, super slow. Jets have run a lot of plays this preseason. I think it's a precursor to what we're going to see. The issue, the issue, the issue is Ty Montgomery. Looks really, really good. Um, and I would be shocked if this guy didn't get, um, you know, some, some, some significant carries. And when I say significant carries, I mean five to eight touches a game. Um, you know, and that eats into Bell's production where he's not uh, having this line that he had on the Steelers. And all of a sudden, you know, that's, I mean, God, that what he used to do with five to seven touches a game. It's, it's what made him the first overall pick consistently. Um, but he goes at 12, no issue there. Love the Juju pick there by, uh, I believe that's Spence, no, Fish Tacos. Who was the last pick? Bell Jarvis. Oh, John Z. Okay, great. Um, Joe Mixon, I was uh, souring on, um, but after seeing that stiff arm on Josh Norman, uh, very much comfortable with that. Not buying into this Gio Bernard business as much. Gio, Joe Mixon, he is just too good to keep off the field. He is too athletic. He is too fast. He might be pound for pound the best running back in the league, and you can take that to the motherfucking bank. Okay? Line's an issue, right? David, It's it's the David Johnson thing, right? Um, but Joe Mixon, I'm totally fine with right there. And then goes that controversial Odell Beckham, um, and the reality is, this is immediately kind of the first pick where it's like, well, besides Zeke, that you can either win or lose your draft. And the problem is, it's the, the injury, you know? He, he's not a injury-prone player, but I mean, Jesus, it seems like something catastrophic just continues to happen to this guy. Um, but he does go to um, uh, Pat Mead, uh, which could be a league winner. Um, and might be, you know, maybe Odell should have gone to John Z, uh, at 13, but he doesn't. And he goes to baby and we'll see what happens. Dalvin Cook, I love. Nice job by Pat Jones, Matt Vallow there. Uh, if he stays healthy, oh my God. Oh my God. I believe he could be, t- I believe he could easily finish over, uh, ba, 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 ba. I mean, he could finish better than Christian McCaffrey. He could absolutely outscore James Conner, uh, Nicholas Chubb, Le'Veon Bell. I mean, really a nice value there, I think. It's just the injury worry, two picks in a row. Travis Kelsey goes in uh, right after that. Nothing to say there. Love that. Mike Evans, this is where we've now entered a new tier, right? You have picks after this. You're not feeling as good. Uh, And Mike Evans goes in the middle of round two to Dill, uh, ahead of Tyreek Hill, which I absolutely hate. I don't know what the hell that was. Uh, and for me, the issue is with Michael Evans is he's not good. I mean, he has been a career compiler. He runs a few routes. He is not a red zone target, right? Had a nice year last year because of the way that... The, 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 Mike Evans makes his money on the fact that when he gets 18 targets a game and converts them into seven catches. That's why Mike Evans is good. He's not actually good, okay? He's not actually good. And I would have taken Antonio Brown over him if Mike Evans was still there. And I won't tell you why yet. So he goes there, girly in the middle of round two, Everyone is a risk at this point. Totally fine with that. Tyreek Hill, beautiful value there right before me. And now you've reached another drop-off. Another huge drop-off where, okay, no matter what I did, every mock, that's it. I was never getting Hill, who obviously can finish as the number one wide receiver every single year. He's too good. Uh, Those boom weeks literally win you the week. Okay, fine, you put up with a couple of seven-point games here and there, but, I mean, my goodness gracious. My goodness gracious, when he goes off, he wins you the week. He wins you the week. It's 30 points a week. Um, So I decided to go with Brown, and quite frankly, I'm just going to tell you this. He's going to prove you wrong. 
I don't give a sh I don't give a sh what Pat Mead's little stats say about whatever. Oh, outside top 20? Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. All right? He'll finish inside the wide receiver top 10. You can take that to the motherfucking bank. Okay? John Gruden will pound the ball to him. Pepper him. I mean, you want to talk about Mike Evans targets? You're going to see it right now. You're going to see it right now. Sure, they have Tyrell Williams. That'll only help. That'll only help. Darren Waller replaces Jared Cook. Great. Give me another passing option to free up uh, Brown here. I like this offense this year. Okay? And I like the defense is bad again. All right? So, fine. Okay, I don't, I don't see the 15 touchdowns. I don't care, dude. He's getting 14 targets a game. And he's going to make me win the whole league. Yikes. So Keenan Allen, disgusting, never on my board. Uh, Mike Williams is going to... Mike Between Mike Williams and Hunter Henry, they're going to have 20 touchdowns from Phillip Rivers. There ain't much left over uh, after that. We have Phillip Rivers throws 27 touchdowns this year, right? 24 to 27. Uh, Keenan Allen, just sorry. He's slippery, but he disappears for weeks at a time. And then he gets hot. And you have your couple of games. But what, five touchdowns I project for this guy? Yeah, no, no thanks for me. No thanks for me. That's absolutely Antonio Brown for me. Damian Williams goes at the appropriate spot. We've heard, you know, Andy Reid, this committee talk, blah, 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 blah. I may, if I'm going to have a regret in the second round, it might not just be going with him. Okay, but he goes to Eric. Uh, George Kittle, totally good there. Um, a little worried about him uh, in terms of the can he repeat it, right? His yak... Just the way that that offense played out, having nobody healthy last year, like he was the guy, um, but he is just, you know, nothing's changed. And oh, by the way, he wasn't as good with Jimmy Garoppolo. That's that's the issue, but he was not good with Jimmy G. He exploded with C.J. Bethard and Nicholas Mullins. Um, so does it concern you this year? Man, no, because he's gobbling up those targets in the preseason. All right, let's keep it moving. That's already 13 minutes. We got to go quick. We're only in the middle round two. Carry on Johnson. My concern here is now C.J. Anderson because C.J. Anderson played a lot of first-team snaps. A lot. Of uh, of, of, of snaps um, in this preseason. I think he will be a thorn in the side of Carry on Johnson. I was hot on him, uh, as was Jason Moore of F the, you know, the FF Ballers. Um, and I just... I would have taken Aaron Jones over him. I just would have. I'll tell you that right motherfucking now. Uh, Adam Thielen goes in early in round three, which means he took him over Hilton, Cooper, Diggs, Cooks, Woods. The only issue that I have, really, is I think the answer is Diggs this year. Uh, Thielen was horrible uh, over the last uh, half of the season. I would know. I was the one that made that amazing pick last year over Diggs. That's what I did. That's what took me to a third place finish, um, in, 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 a, in a very successful year where, quite frankly, blah, 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 quite frankly, I deserve second. Um, but that's fine. You know, that's that's water under the bridge at this point. Um, but Thielen's obviously not going to kill him. It's just the reality is when Darren Bevel came over and they fired John D. Filippo, who was throwing the ball too much. Thielen's uh, targets and uh, game script just completely fell off the map. That's an issue. Uh, and I believe that Diggs will finish better than him this year. I, I, I think that Diggs will be the number one wide receiver on that team. Uh, and you're not going to see that, you know, the Thielen trending as the wide receiver one uh, for the first half of the season. Just not going to happen. Hilton is an issue now to Glem. Uh, so that's two bad picks in a row by him. Simply because Andrew Luck is is hurt. I mean, that's just the reality. He is not healthy. I am concerned about him, and I'm concerned about that Colts offense now. Uh, and quite frankly, don't want any of those resources. And I've never drafted Hilton, and I never will. And this was just another easy out for me this year. Uh, I take Aaron Jones at three. Nothing much to say. He's going to be a beast. He's going to be a beast. You saw it last year. You saw it last year when he broke out. Uh, and now you got Aaron Rodgers healthy. You got a new coach. No more Mike McCarthy, that piece of shh that kept him in the cellar for the first half of the season and just made me sweat it out with him on my four freaking four person bench, which I love. Which I love. Uh, Leonard Fournette goes to Fear Boner, so that's back to back risky RBs. That could easily win him the league. 
Um, but it could easily lose in the league. I mean, for for Pete for Pete's sake and 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 Josh's sake and Aaron's sake and uh, you know a bunch of first names, Leonard Fournette might not be playing by week three simply because he is an injury risk. That is the reality. Uh, and he goes over a guy um, like Devontae Freeman, who is also an injury risk, quite frankly. So this third round is probably one of the uglier ones because just so many controversial guys here. Devontae Freeman's allegedly healthy. There's no more Tevin Coleman. Fine with that spot right there to deal as his number one. Okay, Diggs goes. Melvin Gordon goes. He's going to be out till week eight. Sorry. It's just, that's the fact. He has no leverage. The sides are reportedly not even close. Not even close. He will not be playing week one. You can book that. Brandon Cooks goes back to his boy, Baby, uh, who loved him last year. Um, nothing much to say. Took him over Robert Woods. Uh, what would I have done? Oh, God. That's really tough. I'd like to think I'd take Woods just because he was so damn consistent. I mean, he was just the most even keel week to week. You want 10 points, there's Robert Woods. Brandon Cooks can disappear based on game script. That's the reality. But, you know, he, he wanted those boom weeks. And his, I believe as his wide receiver three, what did he do? He did OBJ. And yes, that's his wide receiver three. So he's at that point saying, that's fine. My wide receiver three, let me get top 12 production and just get home runs like every three weeks. Okay, no issue there. Zach Ertz goes, uh, you know how I feel about that. Um, I would have just not, I would have just rather had OJ Howard. Um, sorry. Ertz admitted himself like he's just not going to be the same guy. Because of the target share, because they brought in Deshaun Jackson, because they brought in, um, 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 you know, all these guys, right? Dallas Godare will be on the field a lot, even though he's hurt for now. So, uh, do not expect that same season from Zachary Ertz. Uh, Marlon Mack, round four, quite a drop. Uh, totally get that. I believe there was some stat about the fact that Mack was just not that good when they were behind I think or something like that Naheem Hines is a problem um but Marlon Mack just showed off last year and it was a huge lesson for me that um don't worry about the name if you whether you like it or not uh every guy can be good and you got to be open to it and Marlon Mack kind of you know in my face last year I was like scoffed at him um, good for him to elevate himself to this draft position. Should be, you know, a good guy. That line's good, right? But maybe a lot of this depends on whether Andrew Luck's healthy, right? If he's not playing and the Colts are bad, Naheem Hines, right? Uh, Tyler Boyd early in round four, but I just have no issue with it because uh, he was he was on my round four target. I thought he was going to drop to me. CJ decides to reach uh, and really start that next tier of really special mid-round wide receivers love that play um you're just going to be happy with tyler boyd that's just there's nothing to be said about that uh he helped win pat mead's championship last year that's the reality chris carson goes to pat mead uh and he needs him to play like an rb1 after going wide receiver wide receiver wide receiver uh, zero RB though, you know, all the smartest guys in the room, the Salfinos and the blah, 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 blah. They say that zero RB just works better. Um, and I don't know if Pat Mead went into this draft thinking I'm definitely going for that. Uh, or if he played the board as it load, as it lied, lighted. Um, but Chris Carson now needs to play like a top, you know, 10 running back for Pat Mead. Um, because he has a huge, huge gap at RB2, as we'll see. And quite frankly, and I, I don't want to be that guy. I know he's the champion, but, you know, Pat Mead's team has, if I'm evaluating all the teams, the biggest glaring weakness, you know, heading into week one is like, oh my God, um, you know, your RB2 isn't even cleared to play, and your one of your flexes is yikes. Um, did this strategy pay off or should he have gone, you know, gotten a Dalvin Cook uh, in round two to just set his team off? Rashad Penny's not going away. And the biggest thing with the Seahawks right now is, yes, they led the league in um, in, in rushes last year, um, them and the Ravens, but they will be behind 
that defense is no longer the Legion of Boom. They are no longer the Legion of Doom. They are no longer the Legion of Zoom. They are the Legion, and I'm trying to think of a word that rhymes in my head on the spot. They are the Legion of Yikes. They are the Legion of Yikes. Uh, lost basically everyone on that defense. They will be playing from behind a lot. They will be playing some very good offenses in the NFC West now. In the Niners uh, and the Cardinals. Oh my God, please, hopefully. And the um, and the Rams. That's the reality. Uh, so as they fall behind, you can't run the ball as much. You just can't. Uh, moving on. Um, Kenny Galladay uh, picked over... The likes of by Pat Jones, uh, over the likes of Julian and Godwin, and you know some other very hot receivers. I thought that was horrible. I thought that was horrible. Kenny Galladay disappeared when it counted most. When he was the number one guy, disappeared. Uh, creates good separation for himself, but he's just not a bully on the ball yet. Um, quite frankly. He, he disappeared. He was supposed to explode the second half when a job was his. I don't know that he can be a number one yet. Um, maybe it helps if Marvin Jones is here, but I would have absolutely taken Chris Godwin there. Okay. Pat Mahomes, round four. Whatever, man. I'm not going to comment. He's due to regress. It's just physically impossible to throw 55 back-to-back -back years, and uh, I'm just not paying for quarterback this year. The, the, the more these years pass... The more the lesson is learned, do not reach for a quarterback. It doesn't pay off. I took Deshaun Watson last year, and it probably cost me a championship because Jared Goff ended up being my quarterback for most of the year. Right? Julian Edelman, we love. Godwin, we love. Josh Jacobs, we love. Oh, my God. Um, probably was colder on him a week ago, but this kid looks good. John Gruden, John Gruden is going to Carnell Cadillac Williams, his ass, uh, to 320 touches this year. Goal line, third down, first down, second down. This dude will eat, and he's showing it in preseason. Love Joshua Jacobs. Um, took him right in front of me. I had to go Mark Ingram. Not a lot of people are excited about him. Not a lot of people are excited about him. Uh, and quite frankly, I don't understand. Top line. Top line. Um, a guy that will eat this year. I'm not buying this Justice Hill taking his job business. No way. Mark Ingram can pass block. He can goal line. He can catch the ball. He will finish as a top eight running back. And you can take that to the bank. Because the Ravens will run the sh out of the ball this year. Uh, moving Oh my god, that's 24 minutes. We might have to wrap up soon. Alshon Jeffrey, I thought was a horrible pick there. Holy, I mean, what are you doing? What are you doing, Garrett? Uh, you now have three of the most unexciting receivers. This might be the worst team in the league. Worst team in the league. Alshon Jeffrey there. Uh, when he could have gotten, I don't know, Tyler Lockett, Cooper Cup, Robbie Anderson, Christian Kirk, Michael Williams, uh, Calvin Ridley, Allen Robinson. I mean, literally everyone should have gone ahead. Curtis Samuel, DJ Moore. Yikes. Worst team in the league. Let's cut for a second. I just stopped, had lunch with my wife, and she <clears throat> notified me I was a little too hard on uh, Garrett's team there. That it was very mean. Um, so I decided to just, uh, you know, kind of, I'm going to take a chill pill, right? Bitch, it's all sunny and beautiful, and you over there with a frown looking down over a bitch that's not even thinking about you. Stop. Get up. Get refreshed. Rejuvenated. And get you some air. You know what I'm saying? Be free. Don't let nobody consume your thoughts, your mind, or anything of that nature. Because guess what? They not living for you, and you not living for them. Do you, boo-boo. Okay. So now that we're, we got up, got refreshed, rejuvenated, let's get back into it. Um, Garrett makes a just horrible pick, uh, with Alshon Jeffrey. I just don't know what he was thinking, and he's assembled the worst team, um, when he could have had anyone else. Uh, Derrick Henry finally goes to Eric, um, good value there. 
do you get Derrick Henry from uh, weeks 12 to 17? Or do you get Derrick Henry who didn't crack 10 fantasy points for like ever the first half of the season? We don't know. And it's just a lot of questions around this Titans team, which continues to be bad, um, quite frankly. Love Lockett there. Love Cup there. Took two of my guys right off the board. Could not believe that uh, as I was targeting those guys for my uh, second wide receiver. There it goes, Robbie Anderson. We talked about it during the draft. Love Robbie, uh, but faces murderers row of cornerbacks for the first, I believe, nine weeks of the season. All number ones. Um, it, it's pretty brutal. Um, but the way they used him during the preseason uh, in that Atlanta game um, and the way that the coach is talking about it, signals that they may be looking to throw to him underneath more and just make sure he gets involved. Make sure that he is not a field stretcher with uh, Crowder and Anunwa gobbling up all the targets. I like this Jets offense, actually. and Maybe I like Bell more than I thought. Uh, so Robbie Anderson goes there. Christian Kirk right ahead of me. That was another guy I was kind of waiting on. Um, you know, I could add the trio. The air raid trio uh, between DJ Kyler and uh, Christian Kirk. Um, and now I'm forced to make a pick that, Bob, I did not draft uh, in any of my mocks um, that I'm concerned with, but I am talking myself into the the good part of the narrative. The, the part of the narrative that says, oh my God, no Tyrell, no Gates. Um, second, he's a first-round pick, Really talented, big, big guy, 6'4". Um, need him to take the second-year leap. Like, do not need him for 40 catches and 9 touchdowns. I need him for, like, 85 catches and 9 to 12 touchdowns. Um, I'm excited about him. I really am. Um, and I'll leave it at that. So that, for me, was a no-brainer over uh, Calvin Ridley, um, who, yes, plays in the Dome. Yes, was a first-round pick. Uh, y yes, is a, another good number two. Um, but And yes, had most of his production in the span of three games, like Mike Williams. Um, that's just gut for me, man. Um, I just want Mike. I just I want Big Mike, and that, that that's the end of that. David Montgomery, uh, yeah, this is just where he's going now. Um, you saw me take Mike Davis. Um, maybe concerned that... David doesn't get as much. That concern is dropped, and Mike Davis is off my team now because I think David Montgomery will be a beast. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Sony Michelle, kind of the first boring running back, having to be taken here as a result of David Montgomery going off the board. Sony uh, ingrained himself in this first team job. The question is just his health, and it's another running back with health issues that uh, that uh, I'm Taz takes, and uh, maybe he says, "Listen, if." Two out of three stay healthy. He's got himself a pretty damn good team. Now that Josh Gordon, <laughs> God damn it, has ascended to wide receiver three status automatically. Good for him. Nice nice foresight and foreskin there um, uh, to, to, to take him. Um, and it paid off. Just a really brilliant move. Philip Lindsay there. Uh, loved him last year. You know, helped get me a second place in Hank Fraley as well. Or was it this league? It was this league. Third place. Help me get third place. So um, I just feel like we're sleeping on Philip this year. Like everyone's like 100% Royce is going to be a thing. Now you've got uh, Theo Riddick gobbling up third down. I just thought Philip was too good. I mean, he was too explosive to just not be a thing. Um, so I'm fine there. Sean Watson goes to Matt Vall because obviously he doesn't know how to draft and he takes a quarterback early uh, and he's a Clemson, you know, you know, you know whatever. Um, there goes O.J. Howard, right to baby, right into his lap, unnecessarily, should have been picked by Matt Vall and maybe a few of the guys ahead of him. Um, O.J. Howard will finish better than Zach Ertz this year. Book it. Uh, was a huge target of mine, just wasn't in the cards, right? Allen Robinson I got no issue with. I know we made fun of Jarvis Landry during the draft, but as long as that offense is good, um, you know, that could be good. But I just think the issue is, like, when Freddie Kitchens, like, took over, like, Jarvis Landry just wasn't part of the game plan. He just wasn't part of the game plan. 
And uh, I would not be shocked if Hollywood Higgins, man, that's a Macho Man impression. Um, if what you gonna do, brother, when Hollywood Higgins runs wild on you and runs wild on the fantasy land? I believe that Hollywood Higgins will step up. Um, so, yeah, I'm sticking with my take there. Don't like Jarvis Landry. Um, and then he goes, Tariq Cohen is a... Uh, God, yeah, sorry. Y y yikes. Just no. Like, ew. Two horrible picks right there by... Uh, by by what's-his-face. You know, you pick Jarvis Landry over, over Curtis Samuel, over DJ Moore, over Will Fuller. I just don't get what he's thinking. And therefore, John Z has a bad team as well. Go Bears. Hunter Henry to the classic. Love that. Great argument for him to take a huge leap with Gates out. That's obvious. Curtis Samuel, he gets his guy. Get the argument there. I think at this point, I'm definitely good with Samuel over, over Moore. They'll both look like perennial studs. Cam's got his shoulder back intact. Like, this could be a good year for the Panthers. You know what I'm saying? And they obviously play in that uh, NFC South uh, where a lot of points are scored. Uh, you know, Will Fuller, Corey Davis is kind of a, uh, for me. I mean, if it wasn't happening for Corey Davis last year, is it happening? I mean, if you go back, this guy had led his, led the league in team target share and turned in a horrible year. Now they have A.J. Brown. Now they have the healthy Delaney Walker. Uh, now they have Adam Humphreys. Uh, I don't know that it's happening for Corey Davis. Um, Mariota's on that short lease. Just, yeah. Evan Ingram, uh, kind of shocked. Actually, he went behind Hunter Henry. I think that was kind of dumb now, actually. Um, just for the sake of Ingram probably leading that team in targets. Or maybe, like, second after Saquon. Like, probably should have taken him. Uh, Didi, I, you know, I, I at this point thought, you know, again, I need a receiver at this point. So I skip over Tevin Coleman, which, in hindsight, I'm regretting. Like, I should have just loaded up on running back and just said, you know, at this point, my wide receiver three is just the same. But, you know, round six... Might have AJ Green starting week four. Like, that's kind of hot, right? Like, it's pretty hot. So, I, I did it. Um, but I should have taken Tevin Coleman. James White, Sammy Watkins, Lamar Miller, ew. Marvin Jones, yikes. I know Eric queued him up and picked him by accident. Uh, and then I go with Lat Murray, which I said, you know, not going to step in directly into um, um, the uh, Mark Ingram role. But Mark Ingram, right? You ignore the suspension last year. He got a stuff in the goal line a couple times last year, tackled short. Like he was the RB6 like two years ago. Like people forget. Like people forget. Um, and I just think maybe what I'm banking on is, quite frankly, is that Murray is so trusted around the goal line that I, I just hope that he just gets all goal line. Um, but I don't know if Sean Payton will actually humor me. Uh, but I thought it was a good price there. Round seven, like, nice second flex there. Like, let's get flexed. Jared Cook, Austin Eckler, that's hot, right? You know, nice running back there by Taz. Sterling's pretty hot now with no ODB. Kenyon Drake, ew, but he's he's hurt. Like, Kalen Bellage, great pick by Eric later on. Dante Pettis seems like the right price there, although at this point I'm just like, I think I'm out on Dante. But I think round seven's, like, appropriate. Um, you know, Matt Ryan, top five we talked about. To 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 uh, Patrick uh, Neil Mead, Cam Newtown, Baker Mayfield, three quarterbacks in a row. Marquez Valding Scantling, and I guess you really can't complain about people at this point in the draft because it's just like it like it everyone did well. Like there was just no one left at this point. Uh, Larry Fitz, Darius Geis, we talked about. David and Joku could take a leap, um, but he just might be fourth on that totem pole. But his spark score. Ugh, like, where's that boing sound that I made? Um, I want to talk about... Well, okay, then you got Royce, Rashad, and Miles. And of this trio, Miles is the best value because he probably should be looked at and treated like David Montgomery. Um, and we're just not factoring that in. And that was by Taz. So that's back-to-back -back really good picks there. Um... 
to shore up what was you know that that you know potentially uh, bah, 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 risky running back core. Carson Wentz, Vance McDonald, like give me a wire, give me a t- tight end seven finish, like guarantee, right? Like no road dog, Jesse James, uh, no AB, like Vance McDonald will eat this deer, like he will, like let's fucking go. Uh, Peyton Barber by Glem, oh my god, oh my god, Garrett, oh my god, Jesus Christ, really ugly, like he could have had Kalen Balage or. Tony Pollard, like, just really bad. Just There's just no excuse. Um, Cortland Sutton being slept on this year. Peyton Barber did the impossible. I don't want to get away from this. Peyton Barber literally had 250 touches and got less than 1,000 yards. That has never been done in the NFL. That has never – that level of inefficiency has never, ever been done, and now he's on Glem's team. This is going to be a gloomy year for Glenn. Uh, Corlin Sun being slept on. Jordan Howard, like, fine. I get it. Um, Adam Humphreys way too early to Glenn. Like, oh, my God. But maybe not, actually. Like, I'm kind of talking myself in Adam Humphreys because I just think, like, I get it. Like, he should get a lot of targets, I, I think. Uh, Andrew Luck there in round nine. I guess you could argue is cheap enough. But, like, dude is just, like, hurt. And I don't know, man. Moncrief to me should be very hot. Like I got the two hottest dealers in the draft right now. Like let's go. Um, Geronimo, Deshaun, Tony, nice pick by Spencer. Naheem Hines, not terrible by Pat Jones. Daryl Henderson, the baby. Daryl Henderson's getting used in the preseason as if he's not Todd Gurley's direct backup. Just saying. Beautiful pick with Matt Breida. Holy hell, he fell. Um, he should get a lot of work. Simply because of the fact that he earned it. Devin Funchess, I guess, could be hot. But again, if Andrew Luck isn't there, then, like, how hot is it? Um, Let's wrap this thing up. Uh, DK Metcalf by Cheddar. Yikes. Guy can barely run in a straight line. Guy can only run in a straight line. Um, John Brown, like, I guess. Okay. Garrett, yeah. Golden Tate. It's a tough one for me to hold on to someone for four games like that, but I guess I'm doing that with, you know, A.J. Green. Is A.J. Green the same player as Golden Tate? Maybe not, but this is also round 10, so all bets are off. Really love that Jamison Crowder pick by Eric there. I mean, just really do. Really do. Um, Ito Smith, I hate. I think he's just a bad player, and I think he's been showing that in preseason, but whatever, we're at the point of the draft where it doesn't matter. Marquis good when I'm completely out on. Devontae Parker, yikes. Um, ugh, God. Kenny Stills, just stop it, guys. Come on. Come on. Um, Adrian Peterson looks very hot. Nice job by Spencer again. I like this deal pick right here. Devin Singletary, really nice pick in this round. Really, really nice pick in this round um, uh, by, by Dill. Uh, LaShawn McCoy is just not good, right? Like, we, we know his story now. Michael Gallup, probably, yes, the pick of this round. Far and away. A lot of upside there. Nice job by Taz. I mean, really, nice job. Um, Traquan, Mike, going to have some boom weeks for Gary. I think he finally made a good pick. Um David Moore by me. I think he's going to shock me. I don't think a single person in this draft would have drafted him. And I think that's a huge mistake because I think he had bursts last year. Nobody remembers it. Nobody remembers it, but I do. David Moore was very hot. Showed he could be the starter. Tyler Lockett's not a real number one. David Moore could be a real number one. Tyler Lockett plays out of the slot. David Moore will be the number one outside receiver for this team. DJ DK Metcalf will not be. Because DK Metcalf cannot run anything else but a go route, uh, and will he will be one of the slowest developing rookies? Just count it. Like we said, Seahawks are decimated. I want David Moore to eat, and I want him to do it in Week One. Nah, but we'll see how that target share comes out. Um, Debo Samuel got a lot of talk, but quite frankly, like, is he better than Jalen Hurd? We don't know. What we do know is he he's a massive guy. 
And I guess it's something that the Niners have lacked uh, in a real number one so far. So technically, that's a good pick. That's another good pick by Tess. Um, CJ Anderson, you know, nice job potentially saving his running back situation there in round 13 by, by, by Pat Mead. That's why he's a champion. Kareem Hunt, horrible pick, worst pick of the draft in the last round, and he's already been dropped. Um, Quincy Inunua, not bad either. And that was it. That's your 2019 draft. These are my thoughts. These are my fears. Um, I don't do enough research to really comment on any of this stuff. What I do is listen to 50 different types of podcasts, and then I just go off gut. And, you know, you can make fun of the way that I started my career in this Mansion League, which was perennially last place. But you can't deny what I've done the last three seasons. You can't deny it. And if you recall, when I finished in seventh two years ago, I got extremely unlucky, right? I had the best team, and I finished seventh because every single person went off on me. So that really should be three championships in a row for me. I consider myself a three-time champion. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, and I'm thinking next year we're going to move to, um, or maybe we can do it like in tandem. We're going to go to an Apex League. Uh, ApexLeague.com, they are a uh, site where... It uh, takes luck out of it as much as possible, meaning fab dollars are mandated, right? Like, we've already done that. We're a smart league. We're very mature. What they also do, though, is they allow you to uh, play two people at once, and it takes the cumulative wins. And what this is going to do is it's going to help you in weeks where the best player faces the second best player and the second best player just put up 150 points and lost by one point and now gets a massive loss which is a huge percentage share of wins and losses relative to the entire season of 13 weeks um and misses the playoff unduly as i did two years ago um so we might experiment with that it's just food for thought we could talk about it. it's a long season right um that does it it's been a pleasure um I look forward to this year. I do not feel good. I do have a bottom half team as much as I am trying to defend this team. I am very concerned. Very concerned. Um, so we'll see. As long as Pat Mead doesn't win. I mean, let's just, before we wrap, let's, let's just take a look at this team really quick, right? We, we need some wins here. We need some mental wins here. And maybe this is it, right? He's only projected for 115 week one, like the lowest of the league. Yikes. Um, you know, hot quarterback, beautiful wide receiver core, beautiful tight end, but then just two glaring weaknesses, right? With the flex and the, and the CJ and RB2. I mean, we'll see, right? Long season, but no, oh man, he's got my, he's got my Justice Hill. That's who he's got. He's got Daryl Henderson. So he could be totally fine uh, in a month when things start to shake up. And then that's where, you know, that's what he's been doing, right? He's been making his money on stashing players like Nicholas Chubb that explode. Um, so we'll see. But for now, let's give him the uh, let's give him the week one loss, Spencer. All right, man. Best of luck to y'all. Love y'all. Talk soon. We out.